Okay, another real life deployment session, guys. This time we will discuss eVPN VXLAN in enterprise data centers. Okay, we will uh, talk about uh, actually two data centers here we have, and we have old design and we have uh, some proposal and we will talk POC, etc. With me, I have guests, so they are uh, deploying. I think they deploy some part already, so he will explain us what they have, what they want to have, what they did so far, what they will do. Okay, so environment, this is a, again, as I said, a real life, uh, another real life discussion. As you know, in our YouTube channel, there are many other real life uh, design and deployment uh, scenarios. Uh, people already join, many of my guests join, and we discuss many things. BGP 7938, eVPN, there was a couple other also discussions, not only data centers, also uh, wider network, local network, so on and so forth, even uh, some hyperscalers you can find in the uh, channel, in our YouTube channel, or in our YouTube channel, so like LinkedIn, like Google, these guys also joined to the discussions and I discussed with them their design, in fact, multiple parts. This video might be also our part one, we will see the based on the length, uh, probably we might be starting the second part for the POC part especially, the uh, proof of concept part for the second video. Let's see the length uh, without further ado. Leonardo, welcome. Uh, hi Orhan, hi, hi Al. Uh, so, first in more on time I would like to say thank you about this opportunity. I'm very thankful for, for that, to come here to share and talk with you, to extend knowledge uh, with you and your network. Sure. Uh, my name is Leonardo Neves. I'm 30 years, 30, 31 years old, and I have been working as a network specialist for about nine years. And I'm responsible for the network of a German German industry that makes machining machines here in Brazil. Uh, I'm a CCNP enterprise, and now I go in towards the CCIE enterprise. Uh, here in the screen, I put the, uh, a little about the, the, the agenda of the presentation and how, about how we will talk. Okay, so Leonardo, you are from Brazil, I think, and in uh, recent years, I have been seeing a lot of, a lot of network engineers, good ones, uh, also among my students, it's increasing also from uh, those uh, Mexico, Brazil, Spain, those regions as well. So uh, both network design, those CCD type of students, also CCIEs, uh, route switch in enterprise now, service providers and other CCIEs, uh, they are joining to our trainings as well. Uh, good uh, networking market I am seeing there and good engineers. So also, uh, I also thank you that you took uh, time and you joined us and you let, you'll explain now what you have and of course i will uh, ask some questions to understand what you guys have uh, leonardo sent the slide deck i couldn't look at so much so it is also opportunity for me now to ask him what they have uh, two data centers but probably also you would ask him but still if you guys now watching this video my uh, youtube audience uh, i'm talking about you are watching this video if i am not asking some of your questions if he's not answering some of your questions please ask in the comment section so uh, we will be trying to answer for you and leonardo also uh, i will uh, request from him to check the comments time to time to answer basically uh, your questions guys so if we are not answering your questions throughout our discussion please ask in the comment section okay so now for also, he is now from Brazil, as you know, I am from Istanbul, uh, our website, by the way, orhanagin.net. Ah, in this video, I can give also to my YouTube audience that recently, actually yesterday, I got the www.orhanagin.com extension as well. So people uh, just so for, I think, 10 years almost, we have been using this .net and .com was... Uh, someone else and uh, I was negotiating for the last couple of years and it was not giving and now finally I got it. So orhanagin.com and .net is same website 
lots of videos, lots of articles, of course, training courses. Many of them you can find from there, self-based and instructor that you can join. Now, since I am from Istanbul, he's from Brazil, some uh, connectivity issues we might have. That's why in order to avoid these issues, let's turn off the camera. Let's focus on the slide deck and our technical discussion now. Okay, let's start, Leonardo. Here, I think we okay. have two data centers. What we have exactly, what we are showing here, what you are showing here us, maybe you can use also pen if you can, so you can show exactly what you have, so let's understand. So let's talk about the, the scenario that all of you are seeing the screen, and what was the purpose of the scenario that calls the, the attention of Orhan? Uh, the purpose of this scenario is for high availability of the hosted services and applications of two data centers. Uh, that data centers belongs to a German mechanical engineering in industry placed here in Brazil. Both of these two data centers are local, placed in, this, placed in the same company site with a distance about one kilometer of fiber. That company makes machine machine centers for the automotive sector, aerospace, medical technology, and energy. The company needs the information accessible 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to be reachable for production purposes and for the inter-site collaboration for the production plants over the world and many offices spread in the globe. So. That's the current situation for this customer. Uh, as I mentioned before, both data centers are placed in the same company site. Uh, this project is just for the Brazil site. Uh, this project was divided in, into phases. This is the last phase to be done to the network extension at the second data center. In the current situation, as all of you are seeing the screen, if the data center goes down due to many possibilities, all the services would be unreachable because the connection to the external world and the open links to the distribution switches in the campus would only be reachable through the first data center. This project, project is for delivery of the extension of the same layer to domain and the movement of services between the data centers, with you all feel losing accessibility to the services. So, as you know, in a VMware environment, we can move the servers between host groups inside a cluster of servers. We can define where each host resides, data center A or data center B, and move the virtual servers between them. The ability to make this movement in a VMware environment between virtualization hosts is called vMotion. When doing a vMotion, the operation, operation system doesn't pour off. Uh, so there are many other details to make it work in synchronous storage and so on. Synchronous, uh, synchronous replication, it. are you saying? Synchronous, yes, synch yes, yeah, yes. yeah. But you will not jump for these configurations. Yeah, of course, uh, synchronous, I mean, replication, etc. maybe storage guys uh, might be checking, but uh, we are, of course, focusing on the network side. Okay. Yeah. When the virtualization specialists are doing a vMotion, it can be a, a manual vMotion uh, for a maintenance purpose, or it can run automatically for equalization of consumed resources, CPU and memory in a virtualization cluster. And this operation can run many times during the day. Uh, also, in case of electrical problems, there is the need to move all virtualized services to the second data center. In many cases, the electrical providers here in Brazil takes a long time to establish the power supply. So the time limits set for the set for the UPS and the power generators also determine the time limit, limit to move the virtualization environment to the second data center or vice versa. And also the company needs to be prepared for the future challenges, being able to move all virtualized services to a code in remote data center to be used only in a disaster, in a disaster while 
keeping the same network extended in the remote data center. So uh, uh, thinking about the, all of that, uh, uh, we think about the technology that can be deployed to ensure easy mutation, easy changes and fixes without breaking the data flow from the campus company and not to interrupt the production and the enterprise needs. Uh, uh, all the data, uh, as I said, uh, needs to be accessible by the headquarters, three more product productive plants and many offices spread through the world, all 24 hours per day, seven, seven days in a week. I put it, that image just to illustrate the main data center is stopping to responding, responding their requests. And then the data flow breaking up or taking a time to converge uh, to convert it to the second data center. Thinking about uh, uh, all of this, not including our, our worries about the times of convergence of spanning tree topology, first to hop redundancy protocols, then yes, updates, suites, Mac learning, and so on. Uh, we think about a technology that allows fixed in center paths increases as, uh, of bandwidth and all virtualized services will not have an impact impact on all that that is occurring in the underlay. I, I mean that the, the network admins are able to manage the connections in the underlay. I will be able to increase the bandwidth, remove paths, upgrade them over all the week, and the virtualization specialists will not have any impact of the convergence of that. For our customer uh, needs, uh, a better fit is the VXLAN VPN. So uh, with, a simple definition. With that, you simple... don't you don't need to worry about STP, spanning tree. You don't need to worry about the first top redundancy protocols, such as uh, HSRP, VRRP, GRBP type of things, or make learning. Layer 2 basically will not be there. Because we are talking yeah. about EVPN, because we are talking about only layer 3, which is also BGP here, EVPN, let me say, right? As a control plane. Okay, fine. Yes, because a simple definition, as you, you are saying, of, uh, of VXLAN, is that is an overlay technology that extends the layer 2 domain on top of uh, our layer 3 underlay. So it allows layer 2 adjacency across IP networks, so a better utilization of available paths. All the data centers then will be formed in an overlay technology. Uh, there are other technologies that uh, extend the, the layer 2 domain, like VPLS, but VPLS is a, a data plane technology. Uh, so how does it differ from VXLAN? So just uh, let, me, let me add one thing here. When he says VPLS, data plane technology, I mean, uh, there is a control plane part of it, which is MPLS there, but also yeah, what, yeah. He, what he means is VPLS is data plane learning, which means we are not advertising MAC addresses over any protocol, but instead switches take the frame, take the layer to frame and check the source and destination MAC address and record the source MAC address uh, to the receive port, basically, guys, bind it to the receive port. So uh, this is just a way of learning the MAC addresses, either control plane, so the protocol will advertise layer 2 MAC reachability information, or data plane learning it will be. And VPLS is data plane learning. EVPN is control plane learning. There is another, for example, uh, technology heavily used between the data center, so we call it also between the data center, this kind of technologies, DCI technologies, data center interconnect technologies, so uh, another popular one is, although it is Cisco proprietary, it is OTV. It is control plane learning as well, similar to EVPN. Of course, uh, not as a technology similar to EVPN, but it is, I mean, from control plane learning aspect, it is similar to EVPN. Both OTV as well as EVPN, control plane learning, but VPLS is data plane learning. For VPLS, we need a pseudo wire, so it's like a virtual circuit. But for EVPN and OTV, we don't need a pseudo wire. Just as a side note, 
uh, and let's continue. So this one is not a technical uh, lesson type of, you know, uh, explanation type of uh, webinar, but real life discussion webinar. So for those technical explanation, entire full yes. 10 hour course on EVP and MVX LAN on orhanergin.net, or I, I can say now, orhanergin.com as well. So you can find on the website, guys. 10 hours plus uh, course, entire course on EVP and VX line you can find on the website. Here, just uh, how we are deploying, what are the considerations when they deploy EVP and MVX line on their two data centers we are uh, talking about. Let's continue there now. So, as I was saying, uh, uh, it's not uh, VPLS is not an uh, overlay technology. So, the other two, two problems will ex exist as a result of slow response to a network failures and the network scalability uh, being committed. And finally, they need to use the Dell EMC, and Dell, net not, Dell Networks does not support VPLS or uh, LISP uh, as a control plane for VXLAN. That was the final decision to use VXNAN EVPN. Uh, here I will start to talk about the construction uh, uh, of this scenario. Uh, the access switch, the, uh, the currently access switch, will be replaced by leaf switches with the capacity of symmetric IRB. So by the way, let me also the... add a little bit very fast. Uh, we have two type of uh, layer 3 communication in EVPN. One is symmetric IRB, another is asymmetric IRB. Okay, guys, so uh, details again on the website, on the course you can find. Symmetric IRB, most of the vendors support, by the way. Uh, very few vendors support asymmetric or both symmetric and asymmetric IRB. Usually, vendors, including Cisco, by the way, uh, supports only symmetric IRB uh, as a side note. Okay. So the routing and bridging will be done on the VTAPs in each leaf switch. Uh, the ingress and egress will be done on the VTAPs that will result in a bidirectional traffic. Uh, all the leaves will be in a top of rack and will be placed in pairs to result in a high availability of physical nodes connections to the leaves. Uh, the spine switch will be added just to one spine in each data center uh, the spines will be connected in every single leaf switch. By the way, another, spine... another let me very fast add. Spine, as you can see, it is saying on the topology at the moment, route reflectors. So, which means they will be deploying IBGP, obviously, internal BGP. Okay. Yeah. The spines will be responsible to advertise to all leaves the EVPN learned routes as a route reflector, as uh, uh, Orhan has, has said. Uh, and the ex external routes learned by the border lifts. And finally, the border lift suites will be responsible to connect to the external road and the, the rest of the network, the campus. And also the campus uh, uh, to the data centers. They will be responsible for the redistribution of uh, all overlay roads to the rest of the network and to receive the external roads and redistribute them to the overlay network in both data centers. Uh, so before we jump, uh, uh, we jump for the construction of the underlay and overlay, this will be the final topology. Uh, okay, let's go through this topology a uh, little bit. We, uh, let's start understanding at the top we have leaf etc can you explain it we have two data center dc1 dc2 so we are going a little bit fast uh, what i what i can comment but because uh, really i think my audience also will think the same great slide deck very nice presentation uh, your presentation was i mean really i am impressed so far maybe 100 plus videos on the website uh, on the YouTube channel, I mean, uh, sorry, uh, one of the best presentations. So that's why let's go a little bit slower to explain exactly what we have. You have so many layers here, leaf, leaf, spine, border leaf, data center core. So let's talk about this slowly and uh, let's explain what we have. Okay. Uh, as I said, the, the, the access suites in data centers will be replaced by leaf suites. Mm -hmm. 
yep. the customer has three cluster of hosts, a cluster for the main virtualization, for the engineering services, and for the horizon virtualization, users, desktop and workstation virtualization. And uh, I put here uh, every list switch, including the border leaf, will have uh, an initial open link of 100 gigabit coming for each spine switch. So here- So I basically, basically leaf to spine will be 100 gig, correct? Yeah, correct. Okay. So I put the rates of the spines, uh, lifts, and the border lifts. We'll not talk about the, the campus LAN, but uh, between the the connection between the core and the border lifts to the data centers will be done uh, using BGP. So basically, uh, not a BGP connection. Not only uh, BGP inside the data center, but you also have. Uh, BGP between the data center and the campus LAN, ca campus local area network, correct? Yeah, but and in between the, the core huh. and, and between the core layer and the distribution layer in the campus, uh, the connection will be done using OSPF. Okay, so let me summarize then from the routing protocol point of view inside the data center, uh, up to the, I mean, between the leaf and spine, it is IBGP, internal BGP. Then between the, actually that leaf is another leaf. So, so we have here, we, you are showing as multiple layers, but in fact, when we just fold it, it is just three stage claw. Okay. So three stage claw topology or uh, sometimes we call it two level uh, close topology. So then uh, between the leaf and spine, IBGP, internal BGP you have. Then between the leaf, border leaf, of course, connected to the outside world. So between the border leaf and data center core, you have also BGP, which is eBGP this time, external BGP, you say. And then this data center core is also, I think, is shared with the campus uh, network. So it, correct. So data center core. Yeah. yeah. Campus yeah. core also this one. So this core layer. Uh, is talking with the distribution layer, also layer three, but this time is IGP protocol, which is OSPF here. Okay, IGP protocol, when we say, guys, by the way, it could be static routing or it could be one of the dynamic routing protocols. So OSPF, ISA, CIGRP, etc., could be, but they are uh, using OSPF. Is there any reason why you are choosing OSPF? Uh, the, the, the specialists in this enterprise, they are custom the, to, the use it to, they're most, more comfortable to use the OSPF. Excellent. And the OSPF was, was deployed, is already deployed in, in some uh, distribution suites. And we divided uh, into, into areas, uh, the distribution suites to, uh, to use the summarization of the, the, all the VLANs in the campus network. I see. I see your point. So the network engineers are familiar with the OSPF. That's why they continue with the OSPF. Okay, let's yes. move on. Okay, great. So for the underlay connection between now uh, going back to the data centers, uh, just to, 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 to talk again, that the distance between both of these data centers, uh, they are placed in the same, same company site. And the distance between these data centers is for about one kilometer of fiber. So basically, uh, by the way, from the this distance wouldn't create extra propagation delay for us. Uh, let me give you a theoretical, I mean, uh, some information. Every 1000 kilometer, guys, at uh, five millisecond latency, okay? extra latency because of distance every 1000 mile those uh, who are basically using mile as a uh, unit is 8 millisecond latency thousand i am talking about some we are here they have between these both data center you are saying boof i think that one just i am <laughs> confusing so both data center it is one kilometer so from from the propagation delay point of view distance wise propagation delay point of view it is just negligible okay let's move on so going back to the, the data centers, uh, for the underlay connection between the lifts and spines, the chosen protocol was OSPF. 
So all the nodes needs to be in the same OSPF area. Just a that second. Means, uh, OSPF is running between where? Be or between which devices? I mean, I just missed it. Between the between the spines, uh, the spines and the border leaves between the all, all the leaves. All nodes will be the same area. That means a flat design. Ah, uh, okay. The, so within the data center. You will be running uh, OSPF between also leaf and spine, etc. Yeah. You wouldn't need that though. So uh, you are using, I think, that to create the BGP neighborship between the loopbacks. Is that right? Yes, yes, yes. yes so yes, you could right, use right. Uh, unnumbered, etc. I mean, or you could use just uh, point to point interfaces. Uh, the BGP neighborship between the point-to-point -point interfaces, so you wouldn't need extra IGP protocol. So, just a side note, IRC yeah. 7938 deployment, we are talking here. I mean, doesn't have to be... It's a, it's a vendor recommendation to do that. Interesting. Uh, yeah, interesting. Just let me add that, that one. But uh, this is one, one thing that we also, of course, in our EVPM VXLAN course we discussed, OSPF, correct, uh, even uh, I can say Cisco, maybe your vendor is not Cisco, uh, I can say Cisco also I think at the moment recommending, but you can check, we have covered uh, in our EVPM VXLAN course in the website uh, four different models actually, OSPF as the underlay uh, for the EVPM fabric, EVPM VXLAN fabric, then uh, uh, actually OSPF single area, then OSPF multi-area design, I think. Then BGP is also just single protocol. So there are multiple options uh, to do this. You can have a look yeah, at. Right. So, but you are you are using BGP for the EVPM purpose, obviously, and OS, OSPF for underlay transport purpose, correct? Yes, correct. Right. So because why I am saying this, some people are you doing what? BGP as underlay transport and BGP as also EVPN so service layer purpose. You guys are using OSPF as a transport and BGP as the EVPN service layer, I mean for the overlay. And that is at the moment, yeah, actually Cisco and many vendors I think recommending. And in the uh, course also, uh, which I did with Tony Pasenen, we discussed this point and the other also transport options as well. As an underlay options as well, and we compare them. You might want to uh, have a look at for the deep dive technical explanation. Here we are just talking what they choose and why they are choosing little bit, why they are choosing as, as well. Let's continue then, Ari. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so about, uh, now jumping uh, to the lifts. Uh, the lift suites, as I mentioned before, they will be placed in pairs as a top of rack suites. On these pairs, we'll be established a VPC to present to the nodes as a single instance. Then they will be able to make a redundant redundancy of uplinks to the server nodes. Each server node will be connected to a couple of cables in the first leaf and others in the second leaf. Uh, it's important to say that in the switch point of view, uh, will be a VPC. And in the node point of view, will be a lag configuration. You can add something, or Yeah, VPC, when you say, I think uh, Cisco's virtual private port channel, so which means your devices either uh, Nexus or, I think Nexus or, not or, but yeah. Nexus 7K or 9K, I think. Right? Okay, cool. Right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, this one's, guys, really, it's not, it's like when I say it's too much, it's like uh, advertisement of the course. I don't care if you get it. So, so we have, we have many courses. Anyway, uh, some people will get it. But really, uh, we also covered this one. So, someone is uh, wondering how hosts how hosts can be connected to the VPN VXLAN fabric. We have basically two ways at the moment. Either way, uh, this you know VPC can be on the Cisco devices or uh, standard way of doing that with the multi-homing, ESI multi-homing, etc. So uh, we covered all of them, actually. It's very long course, <coughs> oh, sorry, on the website. So uh, this is one of the way when you have Cisco device, you can do VPC. You can also do ESI multi-homing. Little bit more confusing, maybe, but uh, of course, give you a standard-based approach. So you can deploy even different vendors in the same layer of devices. Uh, not only that, it gives you 
other many advantages actually ESI multi owning little bit of course when you go to the complex solution can give you much more maybe uh, you know features capability but it might be a little bit complex also okay let's move on uh, for the control plane the protocol of choice as we are talking is the multi protocol BGP with the address family EVPN uh, so uh, EVPN is a control plane solution to distribute and initiate the layer 2 and layer 3 information between the taps in an overlay network uh, so to make everything work, the protocol, the BGP protocol, is needed to support the extension of EVPN to VXLAN. But uh, it's not used the traditional uh, BGP that supports uh, unicast prefix before and VFIX. In this case, multi-protocol BGP is used with the address family EVPN. With the EVPN working as a VXLAN control plane, all four decisions are now based on control plane that decreases the fluid that was generated in the fluid and learning on data plane with excellent solution. Correct. So, Correct. So, so the announcement of accessibility information will be done through the multi protocol BGP. Also, we can configure the VTAP authentication for increased security that we made through the BGP period and so on. And uh, not less important, the ARP suppression option can that can help it the minimizing network flooding. Let me add one, one, so, one couple of things there. Actually, ARP suppression he just mentioned last point. It is very important because it will be reducing your uh, bomb traffic, broadcast unknown unicast multicast. I mean, and uh, it will of course when it reduces depends on the number of basically uh, you know those uh, frames, bump, bump frames, it might be really bandwidth consumption point of view. It might be costly. And we discussed uh, that one also. But uh, not only that, from the device resources, CPU, memory, device resources point of view, bump traffic, like ARP, for example, broadcast traffic, right? So you will reduce it. So uh, unknown unicast can be completely eliminated. So uh, ARP and V suppression we usually call it because we don't have ARP in IPv6, but uh, EVPN also can support reducing for the uh, IPv6. So guys, uh, ARP and V suppression is important concept. Uh, VPLS, uh, it's not possible as far as I know, hard to do, but uh, OTV and EVPN comes with it by default. Okay. All network devices uh, will be in the same BGP IS number. Then all the lifts, including the border lifts, will make a peering connection with the rod reflectors. So all the lifts will be peering with all the spines, two in this case. Uh, then the spines will be the rod reflectors in, in this topology. That means that they will reflect all the roads to all lifts. You can add something. Yeah, can actually, ma something? many things can be added here. This is so long discussion, to be honest. But very fast, let me add a couple more things. And for more, I mean, really, I cannot now say just the EVPN VXLAN, but also I need to tell them that they should get the BGP Zero to Hero course also on orangin.net, orangin.com. So why? Let me tell you. So here you are talking about... Uh, basically IBGP in both data centers and IBGP across the data centers as well. This is immediately I am seeing a couple things like uh, you need to deal with the allow AS in or AS override, but mostly allow AS in usually people do when they deploy this way. And you will uh, suffer probably from the BGP pet hunting process, which will cause your BGP convergence to be slow because uh, you are using uh, on the leaf switches, uh, same AS, everywhere <laughs> so uh, this will create the pet hunting issue for just pet hunting to understand you don't need to get the self-paced courses bgp course uh, from the website but you can check on the youtube channel also we have a free explanation i did that one i think i also configured that one you can search in the youtube channel also as uh, bgp pet hunting you will find the video what i am talking about you will understand i deployed also in that video leaf and spine cloud topology and uh, I used intentionally same as number uh, on the leaf switches to simulate the pet hunting issue or uh, how it would 
increase the convergence time in case of failure because you will receive the same prefix from multiple devices, uh, multiple leaf switches, I mean, onto the spine device, and it ha has to hunt the pet. So it will increase the convergence. You will you will suffer from that. Ha! Huh. That's why RFC 7938 will recommend you, is recommending you to use unique AS on the top of rack switches. So unique mean different ASs on the top of rack switches. But this one, really, really long discussion. And in fact, ha, huh, just uh, deploying BGP, AS numbers, IBGP, EBGP, if you want, if you don't want to pay for the paid course, obviously that course is 30, 40 hours, also very long course. But there are a couple videos, real life BGP deployment in the data center in our YouTube channel, luckily. So you can also have a look at them. I think they are not so long for five hours, two, three videos. You can also have a look at later on. So this video is like a complimentary to, to, to do those videos. Very nice presentation. This one was one of the best, by the way. Let's continue, Leonardo. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so now we can finally talk about the overlay. Uh, in the lips, the original the dot on Q VLANs will be associated with the VNI IDs. Then the VNI IDs will be associated with the VTAP. Uh, VTAP is a device that provides both encapsulation and decapsulation of classical Ethernet and VXLAN packets to and from a VXLAN segment. On the NVA interfaces, the protocol BGP will be configured to use the ingress replication for communication between VTAPs and the ARP suppression. Uh, the ARP suppression is utilized to minimize the flooding and learning, as we are saying, in the host's learning. Now, when a host is sending a ARP request, the, the ARP request, the VTAP where the host is connected, receives this solicitation, intercepts it, and if the VTAP knows the destination MAC address, the VTAP where the host is connected will deliver a ARP reply, being the destination host itself to the source host. Although, if the VTAP that intercepted this message does not have this MAC address populated, it will forward a ARP solicitation to the remote VTAPs using the head-end replication, ingress replication through the boot protocol BGP. Head-end replication, ingress replication uh, is one way, of course, uh, delivering that. Uh, also, we have a native multicast approach as well. So, by using PIM protocol, uh, PIM SSM ASM binder, we, all, we also explain all of them uh, in our EVP and VXLAN course, uh, guys. Uh, but uh, without deploying any multicast, head-end replication, or we call it also ingress replication, is one way. So uh, with that approach, you don't have to deploy multicast at all, but it would increase the bandwidth usage anyway in your network, uh, in your DC network. And also, it will increase the resource usage on the head-end device, which we call head-end replication, that's why. Okay, let's move on. Remembering that the all, in all interfaces VLANs will be configured the distributed gateway, and cat gateway, over all the fabric, making an efficient mo VM's mobility. So all VM's with, Yofi, with Yofi worrying about the location will have the same gateway address. When I need to move, when I need to do a motion to a second data center, the, the, this uh, virtualized server will have the same uh, gateway address. That will result in a, in a, in a good uh, uh, VM's mobility, an efficient VM's mobility. So after that, the VXLAN 2 tunnel uh, will be established and the VXLAN data plane will be established in our overlay. Okay. So the data flow to guarantee the data flow just in the, in the, in the spine on the main data center, uh, in the underlay was configured a higher OSPF cost. Uh, in the spine, place it in the second data center. So all the data flow will be done in the first spine. Just in case, just in a failure in the first spine, 
the data flow will change to the second spine. I mean uh, that all BGP VPN transport will be done in the main spine because the roads available in the main spine will have a lower cost instead of the roads to the second spine. So basically they will be choosing their local data center in this way, uh, in the first yeah. place. But if there is a failure, etc., they can still use the another data center. For uh, those spine to spine, basically RR to RR communication to happen, you need to use different cluster ID and you use already, which is okay. So then choose the first border leaf in the main data center as a exit point. Uh, the mainly as point was configured a local preference uh, uh, and now received the roads in the first border leaf. Then the first border leaf will advertise the roads with a higher BGP local preference to uh, to the network in the data centers. So the as point, the main as point uh, for the data center will be done in the the, the first border leaf. Can you add something? No, no, that's okay. So far, so good. So after that, uh, Orhan, we will jump it for the proof of concept. So then let's not jump dash because already this is a little bit over the 40 minutes. So uh, let's have this second part. So uh, okay. for the proof of concept and for the second part, hopefully we can also uh, publish it on the uh, YouTube channel, but depends on the number of likes, number of comments, and also, guys, if you like this video, uh, subscribe and you can get the notification when there is a new video. But uh, this this second video proof of concept can go to the also uh, website if there is no there is not much enough you know like and comments. So let's see if you are interested really to see the second part proof of concept. And so, uh, thank you very much, Leonardo. What you would like to say? Okay, thank you, thank you. So cool. Uh, thanks for being here, guys. As I said, uh, you can check the VPMEX LAN course on the website and BGP course as well. If you want, those are long courses you can check in, in your free time, of course, because that's why we call it self-based. You can uh, study. And if you have some questions regarding this video, please ask in the comment section. Let's answer. Uh, hopefully you liked it because I really liked the presentation. And uh, so, yeah, thank you very much for watching and see you with the other videos.